Welcome to Killick Rugby. I'm very pleased to have uh, Luke Narraway with us. So let's jump straight in. Given the players that are available now, who would your back row be? Available in the squad or available full stop? <laughs> <laughs> well, do both, do both. See, I'm a big fan of Stefan Armitage. I think he's probably the best back row in, in, in Europe at the moment, um, but he's not in the squad. And being a player that's been to France um, has given up that kind of right to be thought of in selection meetings for England and stuff like that. As a player, you, you know exactly what you're doing before you go you know, across the channel. Um, and, and he's done that. So he can't complain too much. Now, on the, the other side of things, as an Englishman, having probably the best back rower in Europe in a World Cup year, I think he's got to play. Um, and I was a little bit disappointed not to see him in the squad. I thought he did enough. I think he got another man of the match at the weekend for Toulon. Um, and if you're going to win a World Cup or a Six Nations, you need your best players out there. Saying that, he's not in the squad. Um, so I think they'll go for, I think they'll go, well, definite flankers, Tom Wood, Chris Robshaw. I think those two will be there until the, the World Cup. I think they'll be there. I think Billy's done enough in the last two games for, for Saracens to, to warrant selection. I also think that going into a first game in, in the Millennium was a tr really difficult place to go and play you probably want a little bit more experience in there and someone who you know is going to turn up. And I think Nick Easter is, you know, put his hat into the ring for that one. Um, so personally, if it was me, I would have Chris Robshaw, James Haskell, Nick Easter with Billy on the bench. Um, I think they'll go for Tom Wood, Chris Robshaw, Billy Villapola. Would you play James at eight or would you play him at, at, at six? <laughs> it's a difficult one. Um, again, I would play, I'd play Hask at six. Um, I'd go with Hask at six and, and Billy, at, Billy at eight and I'd say, you know, Billy, get over the gain line, do what you do best, carry, carry, carry. And, and to Hask, just, just do all the, all the work, all the, the nitty gritty that you don't usually see in the headlines. You don't, you don't read about, you know, the 28 tackles he made against Harlequins the other, the other week, that kind of performance, I'd say to Hask, go out and go out and provide us. And I, I think he could do that. And I think having that would be a good balance. The only thing you might lose out on is, um, you know, going aerial in the line out with Chris Robshaw at seven, not going up too much. But I think if you could pick two second rows that, that were, were capable of, of going up in the air, you know, like very well, um, I think you could probably play that back row together. Going back to Stefan Armitage, I mean, what makes him such a great player? You know, what does he do that's different from other number sevens? Um, or the same? Yeah, he's been playing a lot at eight, um, very unconventional being five foot, eight, nine, um, but I think he's just got everything because he's so low to the to the ground and, and a very thick set guy, it almost makes him impossible to get off the ball. Um, I've played against him for, for years in the Premiership and over in France and just once he gets over that ball, if he gets there before you, you know, it, it's impossible to get him off. Um, so around the ruck, he, he's got that as a typical number seven does. But then I think where he differentiates from the from the rest of sevens is that he's then got like he's an unbelievable ball carrier. Um, he's he's as quick as a back, um, and the fact that he's got that low centre of gravity and he's he's a big powerful guy, it makes him very strong as well. Um, so I think that kind of sets him aside from from other sevens. You have your your traditional, you know, your fetchers, the guys that are going to go slow the ball down, that are going to turn the ball over, but then potentially they don't have, you know, anything else, no X factor. Um, where Stefan has got everything. He's almost like the perfect, perfectly balanced back row, but all in one. And that's why he can play across the back row. And I think if England don't select him for the for the World Cup, they're definitely missing a trick. Okay, but if he was to play um, for England, um, 
Where would you play him? Personally, I would play him at seven. I would play him in his natural position. And I think when you play against New Zealand, McCaw, yeah. um, Australia, Pocock if he's back or Hooper, you need someone to go head to head with those guys. I'm not saying that Robshaw doesn't. Um, I'm a big fan of, of Chris Robshaw. But I think over that ball, I think there's very few in the world that are proper world class. And I think Stefan's one of those. I would actually move Chris to, to the blind side and have have Stefan there at seven, I think. In terms of uh, the Millennium Stadium, I mean, you've played there. Um, how difficult is it? You know, Do you feed off the opposition supporters or do they make it hostile? Well, for me, it's, it's the best stadium in the world. It's the best stadium I've played in. Um, the hostility is up there with anything I've played in. Um, and some people react differently. Personally, I, I love playing in, in that kind of environment. I went to France for two years where every away stadium you go to, it's like that. People are booing the kicker. They're shouting abuse at the opposition. Um, and as I say, it's, it's up there with the most hostile places in the world. Um, and I just think it depends whether England go there and they thrive off it. And, and they, you know, stick their chests out and they, you know, we're going to take this on, we're going to take the whole country on. Or if the pressure is too much and they shrink. And I think that's something they'll probably be talking about in the next in the next two weeks. Do you think they should have the roof open or closed? For me, closed. It just amplifies the, the crowd tenfold. It is truly amazing when the roof's closed and you've got so many thousand Welshmen seeing the national anthem and, and booing you and, and heckling you as you run out. It, it, it's, it's the best atmosphere in the world for me. So just in terms of that crucial opening Six Nations game, how do you think it's going to go? Yeah, obviously my heart says says England and I, and I obviously want them to win and I want them to go well in the Six Nations. I just think Stuart Lancaster would have liked it to be two or three games into the Six Nations. Knowing a few Welsh rugby players that I do, they won't really care if they lose two other games as long as they as long as they win this one. And it's the same with people in in Wales. You know, even if they don't play rugby, they want to beat England. Um, and I think because of that, I think everything's just stacked against England. I think that the injuries are obviously our maybe ten first uh, teamers out at the moment. Um, so I really think it's going to be stacked up against England. Saying that, I'd like them to go for an attacking selection um, and hopefully take it to them. And if they can get off on the right foot in the first 20 minutes, I think potentially they, they could go there and win.